Throughout the history of aviation, it's been true that all great aircraft are powered by great engines. And to see the future and where that's heading, you've got to come somewhere like the Farnborough Air Show and to see exhibits like this, Rolls-Royce's Advanced Low Pressure System Demonstrator. So Rolls-Royce, General Electric and Pratt & Whitney, the big three, are all showing, exhibiting examples of their new technology. So we'll have a quick look at those. And let's start with Rolls-Royce's Alps Demonstrator. The first Alps Demonstrator that's going to be taken into flight is already in the United States at the Stennis Test Facility in Mississippi, where the engine is being used to conduct crosswind testing. Rolls-Royce's approach has been to perfect the aerodynamics of the leading edge of each blade and make them possible, made them thin as you possibly can to increase efficiency. The Alps engine, following its testing in Stennis, will go up to Tucson, Arizona, where it will be flown on Rolls-Royce's 747 flying test bed. The technology itself ultimately will appear on a new family of Rolls-Royce engines called at the moment the Advance. And that will feature as their new family of wide-bodied engines from about 2020 onwards. Pratt & Whitney's geared turbofan is recognised by the industry as a game-changer. This is principally because of the gear at the heart of the design. It allows the low pressure and high pressure spools to operate at their optimum speeds. This engine behind me is the PW1500G for Bombardier C-Series. This is the 150 hour redline test which went through an amazing amount of testing and the sort of conditions that you would never see in real life. But it has successfully been through the testing and is here at the show. The next programme Coming up is the Airbus A320neo. This is the PW1100G. The first engines are now mounted on that aircraft and it's getting ready for first flight. Behind that, Mitsubishi, the regional jet, has taken delivery of its first ship set and that engine, those engines are now mounted, ready to power the MRJ again at the beginning of its test program. Russia's Kut program is also underway with the MC21. And beyond that, Embraer is developing the E2 generation, also utilizing variants of the, of the GTF. So in all, the company is looking to a massive ramp up of production to support these five programs. And for now, the focus is on getting through flight tests. For General Electric, Farnborough is a great opportunity to showcase not only the GE NX, one of which is shown here right beside me, but also the GE 9X, its next generation engine, which is going to power Boeing's 777X. This engine, the 9X, will build on lessons learned, not only with this engine, but also with the GE 90, which is the current 777X engine. But with this one, the 9X, GE is going to take it to a whole new level. The overall pressure ratio will be 60 to 1, unheard of sort of levels in the industry at the moment. And the blades technology, for example, will go beyond this level. Only 16 blades on the GE9X, which will utilize some technology developed in cooperation with SNECMA, GE's long-standing partner on the CFM partnership. There are other materials advances inside, CMCs for example, which will withstand hot temperatures but will be lightweight. So let's have a closer look inside the GE9X. The 11 stage compressor has a 27 to 1 pressure ratio. Five of the stages may be blisked. The combustor is a third generation twin annular pre-swirl combustor with margin to Cape 10. Ceramics, matrix composites may be used in the combustor and the turbine. Fuel nozzles will be made by additive manufacturing techniques, while the high-pressure turbine will include new powdered alloys.